Hello there. with another video please hit the subscribe button for more content from me and if you want turn on the little bell so you can get notified every time I make a new post today I am going to be sharing with you my top 10 festivals you should do before you die little dramatic I know but let me explain I've been going to festivals for the past six years and it really blows my mind when people tell me that they've never been to a festival before and they're my age or that they never plan on going. That just seems like a crazy statement to me. Like, do you like music? Do you like having a good time? Do you like really great food? Do you like making new friends? If any of these apply to you whatsoever, a festival is the perfect place for these things. You don't have to put yourself into the middle of the crowd if crowds aren't your thing. I believe deep down in my heart that there is a place for every type of person at a festival. Doesn't matter your age, race, sexual orientation, none of that matters in a festival. And my camera's about to die. Awesome. All right, technical difficulties aside, Welcome back. Two weeks later, same girl, same Pikachu, different beanie. Let's do this. I'm clearly very good at YouTube, you guys. I know. Okay, so I charged my battery. Only took two weeks, but we are here. Hopefully I can get through this without it dying again. But we're gonna do our best. And the lighting is beautiful today. Need my juice first. Oh, hi. <laughs> Can't waste a single drop. <sighs> okay, I'm ready. As I was saying two weeks ago, I believe that festivals are for any type of person. If you have a bucket list of any sort and attending a festival isn't on there yet, I'm hoping that this video will change your mind. I'm gonna list off 10 of the festivals that are on my personal bucket list and tell you a few reasons why I wanna attend each of them. Disclaimer, I know there are like a hundred thousand million bajillion different festivals out there for you to try there's anything from just a local festival in your town that I probably don't even know about because I've been in Florida basically my whole life there's also the massive festivals that you can watch from the privacy of your own home on YouTube live whatever the festival it may be I feel deep down in my soul that you should at least give it a try once one time Definitely go with people you love, people that you trust, that are going to give you good vibes during the entire festival. Obviously, go to a festival that has the music that you're interested in. There's festivals for any type of genre of music. I've been to rock festivals, festivals that have different kinds of music, anywhere from live bands to electronic artists. If you look hard enough, I guarantee you there is something out there for you where you can go and have an amazing experience. All right, I'm gonna stop rambling now and get into my personal top 10 festivals I believe you should attend before you die. If my list doesn't correlate with what your interests are, I suggest you do some research and find something that's going to fit your personality and your music taste. I'm gonna go backwards and start with my 10th best festival I think you should attend before you die. Do you understand the preface of this video yet? Hope I've drilled it into your brain enough. Moving on. Number 10 on my list is Mysteryland in the Netherlands. This festival has been around for years and years. The original being held in the Netherlands. They did attempt Mysteryland in the States, I believe a couple years back and it got canceled before I was able to attend. But I feel like I would really want to go to the original one above any of the others. 
This festival is held in August and it is two days. Mysteryland is one of those festivals that is going to be primarily electronic music based. Most of the subgenres of electronic music include techno, house music, hard style, just to name a few. Mysteryland definitely takes pride on their production. They have massive stages, always amazing things that go along with their stages. They do remind me a little bit of how Tomorrowland themes their stages and production. I did not get a pricing for this festival before I started filming this video because I'm just such a good YouTuber. But I do know that it is pretty affordable. It's not the most expensive festival that I'm going to list. But the only thing is if you are living in the States like me, you have to buy the plane ticket over there. And that is the reason why I am not at almost every one of these festivals already. I got my passport. Somebody who can give me a discount, like, hit me up. Number nine on my list of festivals to do before you die is Creamfields in the UK. Creamfields reminds me a lot of Ultra in the US. It is a massive festival as well with multiple different stages and they bring basically every single artist you could possibly name. The lineup is so massive that you could walk to any stage in that entire festival and find someone that you love and it would be impossible to see everybody that you want to see. But in the case of these festivals, I always just see it as me enjoying my time, going with the flow, going where I feel like I'm having the most fun and not making it all about just seeing every single artist on my list. Because at the end of the day, you're there to have a good time and if the schedule doesn't go exactly to plan, don't beat yourself up about it. Just have fun. Especially if you're in a big group, it's almost impossible to keep a schedule. Just if your group is more than three people just throw out the idea of getting to any of the sets that you want to get to on time because someone's gonna want to go to the bathroom someone's gonna be hungry somebody's gonna be throwing up in a bush like there's just too much unpredictability with that many people in your group but enough of my tangents on to number Eight Awakenings Music Festival in Amsterdam. A few of my closest friends have attended this festival multiple times already and they rant and rave about it. I've seen their pictures and videos and it's just, it is the epitome of techno festivals in the entire world. If techno is your thing, Awakenings is the festival for you. And it goes for about 175 to 300 euros. And I'm looking up what the translation into US dollars is, so give your girl a second. <laughs> and we're back. All right, so, so the translation of euros into US dollars is basically the same, the United States bill being a little bit less in value, about 13 cents less, at least that's what Google is telling me. So it's about the same price in American dollars as euros. Moving on to number seven on your list of top 10 festivals to do before you die. And I don't know why I'm talking like this. I don't even know what accent this is. It's a little bit of everything. Anyways. Number seven on my list is Rampage Music Festival in Belgium. Rampage is a mix between dubstep and DNB, both very heavy bass subgenres of dance music coming together to make their beautiful love child Rampage. I was watching the live feed from this festival last year and was blown away by how hard all of these DJs went during their sets. If dubstep and drum and bass are your thing, Rampage should definitely be on the top of your list. Rampage is held March 29th and 30th, only two days, and it goes for about 95 euros. Cheap. It has an amazing lineup, and it's in freaking Belgium of all places. Definitely need to make a trip out there soon for this festival. As you can see, I love my bass music, so it's definitely one that I am going to be at in the future. Number six on my list of top 10 festivals to do before you die is one that I've actually been to quite a few times. It's very close to home, and that is... Da -da 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 Ultra Music Festival! Ultra will always have a special place in my heart because it was my very first festival. I went in 2013 for their first week and I got to see 
so many people. It really opened my eyes to exactly how special dance music is and how personally I connect with a lot of the artists in dance music. Ultra is a great starting festival as well because it is for, I don't want to say catered towards younger people, but it is, it used to be an all ages event and I feel like a lot of people who live in Florida and around the East Coast do travel for Ultra as their first festival. It has every artist that you could possibly imagine. The list of the lineup is just miles long. It's ridiculous. They do have a few bumps in the road as far as planning goes. As long as you're being careful, you're with a good group of people that are gonna take care of each other and you're drinking water, you should be fine. If you have those three things and you're taking care of your body and you're taking care of the people in your group. Ultra this year is held March 29th through the 31st. It goes in correlation with Miami Music Week, which in my mind and my brain, the way I've seen dance music for the past six years is the start of festival season. Obviously festivals are year round, but I feel like during Miami Music Week, all the artists are coming together to start releasing their collaborations releasing their new music and then they all join together at Ultra to perform. It definitely sets the tone for the rest of the year and you start to hear those bangers that you're gonna hear throughout the entire summer at every other festival. The tickets do get a little pricey but I bought my very first Ultra ticket a week before the event on a McDonald's hourly lifestyle so if I can do it and I can make it there you can too. Number five on my list is actually one that I am extremely excited for and that is Bonnaroo Music Festival. Just a quick side note right here, I'm actually going to reveal how incredibly late this video is and how horrible I am at YouTubing, but I actually did not end up attending Bonnaroo Music Festival this year like I had planned at the time that I was filming this video and now I'm very depressed while I'm editing this. Okay, bye. Bonnaroo is one of the newer festivals. It's only been around since I think the early 2000s, but it was never really on my list of festivals I wanted to go to until recently last year. With Oki closing and us not having our home base here in Florida. Update, Oki ticket already secured. See you there 2020. Yo, yeah to be able to experience music from all different types of genres in a festival setting, in a camping setting. Uh, Bonnaroo just seems like the move. It's It's got a lot of the same vibes as Okeechobee did, except it is held in Tennessee, not Florida. I've had multiple people go to this festival in the past and have nothing but good things to say about it. Bonnaroo prides itself on their conservation and their recycling. They try to keep their grounds very clean clean. They have seminars about the environment at the actual festival that you can attend. They have yoga classes and of course they have an amazing lineup filled with electronic artists and your favorite everyday pop and hip-hop artists. My fourth festival on this list of 10 festivals you should do before you die. Movement Festival in Denver, Colorado. I know what you all are thinking. Why is this girl making this video when she clearly has no idea what the fuck she is talking about. I promise I'm not stupid. I'm just a little slow. But I do in fact know that movement is held in Detroit, Michigan, not Denver, Colorado. Okay, back to the original programming. Again, another very, very, very massive festival that's held here in the States for mainly techno and tech house artists. This festival's been through it, man. It's It's gone through so many name changes, so many different owners and planners it's it's insane but they've managed to keep it going for quite a few years and it just seems to get more and more and more massive okay now getting down into the nitty-gritty the three festivals that if I do not make it to my life is I don't want to say incomplete but it's definitely not gonna be as complete as it should have been three being Tomorrowland in Belgium. I feel like this festival is the most talked about when it comes to festivals, especially electronic festivals. It's been going on for years and years and years. They have the most amazing, massive, creative production in the game. Right up there with Insomniac. They are just amazing. And I am so beyond heartbroken that I never got to make 
it to Tomorrow World while it was in the States. The last year that they had it, you know, the if you know anything about festival history, the chaotic year. Yeah, that was the year that I turned 21 and I was actually planning to go. I don't remember exactly why I decided against it, but it just wasn't in the cards for me and I'm really upset that I didn't get to go, but at the same time I feel blessed because that would have been my first camping festival. I would have not been prepared for that rain. I would have definitely been one of those people stuck in that mud. So it, you know, everything happens for a reason, but I definitely want to make it to Tomorrowland in the very near future. They have their shit together. They know what they're doing. They have been doing this for a very long time and their lineup is always incredible. Man. It would just be amazing. Seriously, get emotional thinking about it. Number two do, 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 is a festival that I have known about since before I even really knew what festivals were. The word festival doesn't really begin to describe this event at all. It's just, it's the oldest gathering to my knowledge that I know of. It's been going on since before I was born. I think the first burn was in 1994 or 1993 somewhere around that era so I was uh, either cooking in my mama's tummy or just being spat out the womb Ugh, that's a picture for you you're welcome burning man I would love to do burning man uh, in the very near future the vibes there are amazing they have their own freaking community people literally barter there like back way back when before we had this whole system you know it's they just break down the walls of society as you know it you're stuck you know not stuck but you're stuck in the desert for almost a week if you stay the whole time I think it's a week and a half two weeks almost I could be wrong about that sorry it's not one of those places I would want to go to to get just like completely trashed out of my mind or like you know just there to party it's it's really about the entire experience and being part of a different community and really just going on your own spiritual journey there of course there's good music that's part of it but the the whole experience is really really more than just a festival I know for a fact I'm gonna want an RV when I go because your girl is not gonna be in a tent during a massive desert storm but yeah I encourage you to do your own research on Burning Man as a whole it's definitely got a lot of depth and a lot of history a lot of culture do your own research find out more about it be prepared have enough resources okay and now I'm sure the festival that you've all been waiting for um, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious at this point what it could be if you know me personally, but if you do not, here it is. My number one festival that I suggest that you should do before you die. EDC Las Vegas! Yes! Oh my god, amazing festival. I went back in 2015 and I really... <laughs> I really did not know what I was getting myself into. Luckily, I found the most amazing group of people to go with and they're still some of my closest friends today. And they're still some of the friends that I keep closest to my heart today because they are just the best people that I think I've met in this community. We didn't really even know each other that well beforehand. I mean, I had just met Yessi this year and she, she brought me in with her group and I, I literally, you guys, I went on a plane by myself, not even 21 yet, to Vegas for the first time ever in my life. And I just did it, man. I just freaking did it. And I met so many cool people on the ride back to the hotel. I met so many cool people just on the street. Everyone just had this amazing energy about them. I'm talking about the people that were going to the festival. You could tell who was and who wasn't. Obviously by their outwardly appearance, but also by just the vibe they were bringing. Everyone was so excited to be there and it just, it brought me up. It lifted my spirits up so much, even before I even walked into the festival. Vegas itself is massive on its own, but you throw EDC into it and it is just a 
another freaking planet. It is insane. So I could probably do like a million story times from EDC Vegas, but I'm gonna keep it short and sweet and just say that if you don't make it there, you have not lived your best life. Tickets will run you about $400 to $800. I know it's a little pricey. Honestly, I would do it all over again. I am not a wealthy person and I, if you, if you can swing it, it's 100% worth it. One great helpful tip though that I'm gonna give you in this video is look into payment plans for these festivals. If you think that money is the only thing holding you back from going, yes, there are crowds, and if crowds aren't your thing, I do want to warn you that it could be a little overwhelming. At the end of the day, I don't think that festivals are limited to just people who want to be crazy and party like that. If you truly do love the music, you're gonna have a great time. But what I love the most about Pascal and Insomniac and their events is that they make you the headliner. And by headliner, I mean that it, you are the main event to them. They want to create an experience where you're just going to have the best time of your life no matter who is playing. There's something for everybody there. And I, I think it's beautiful that they, they really do try their hardest to cater to every type of person, every walk of life. I could go on and 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 on about Insomniac events as a whole, just all of their festivals, and it really, really shows how much they care about investing back into their festival and making it just that much better every single year, and I have so much respect for companies that do that. They don't just take their money and run, no. They, they invest it back into you guys, into the headliners, and make it just a better experience every single year. They're always one-upping themselves. And that's what makes a great company in general and just a great business is always trying to improve So shout out to you Pascal. You're doing it right. Uh, you made it to my number one spot on the list I did pick EDC Vegas. I believe it is the most massive But they have a list that goes on and on of festivals that have their own special themes And if you're looking into doing a festival for the first time and you want to really do it up look into it an insomniac event go to the one closest near you there's literally dozens that you can choose from and they are all amazing so that about wraps up my top 10 festivals that I believe you should do before you die hopefully you guys found this entertaining if you're looking into what festivals you should do as your first festival or what festivals are left to do for you hopefully you got a little bit of insight and knowledge into some of my favorite festivals and ones that I am aspiring to attend. Let's just name a couple honorable mentions and I believe some of these festivals should get some recognition as well. Let It Roll, Boomtown, Exit, Voodoo Music Festival, Okeechobee Music Festival, May You Rest in Peace and Be Resurrected in 2020. Wish granted, bitch. We're going to Oki 2020 with Insomniac. We about to do it up, baby. And last but not least, Dirty Bird Music Festival. I went to the one on the East Coast and it was amazing, even with all the little bumps in the road, and I really do hope that they decide to bring it back for 2020. All right, you guys. I think that's all I got for you today. Like I said, hopefully you liked this video. Hopefully you found it entertaining or useful. And I hope to be making a lot more content for you in the very near future. Guys, I really mean it this time. New content coming very soon. Not like six months soon. More like a couple weeks soon. Keep it locked. Please subscribe if you want a little bit more of this content. If you want to see me talking about more of these festivals in depth. I also want to kind of give you a few tips and tricks for when attending a first festival So if that's something that interests you definitely click the subscribe button like this video If you've been to any of these festivals and had an amazing time Comment down below if I missed one of your favorite festivals and definitely tell me a little bit more about it Because I'm always open to new festivals and experiences. I hope you have a wonderful beautiful amazing rest of your day and a dope festival season in 2019 and I will see you on the dance floor and in my next video bye guys <gasps> no no I
I just draw my bang on the floor? Ah! Oh, fuck. Ooh, ooh, ooh! I forgot something important. I forgot the YouTube thing. Okay, um, I'm gonna go backwards and start with my 10th best, bad, 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 best festival. The art, the art cars, oh my god, the art cars. The art cars are, go the f Bye, 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 bye. How dare you call me during this video? So definitely, 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 definitely. Ah, that's my favorite word. I'm sorry. Oh, hi. I am slow. Sorry, bear with me.